This is a news review and my name is Sajo Brita. Coming up, nine sacked officials of a Food Safety and Quality Authority of the Gambia were on Tuesday removed from the FSQA offices after they continued to report to work after their sacking. Gambians share their views on the poor quality of Gambian roads. Former President Jame on Former President Jame was today conferred a peace award by Concerned Gambians a Social Welfare Organization. I will be speaking to Coach Pasamba Jao on this and other issues. These and more coming up. Stay with us as we first begin with a review of the newspapers. First, we will take a look at the standard newspaper and some of the headlines. Band group demands a borough organized elections in September. Mayor Ben Suda uh, vents frustration with a government. IEC rebuilds NCP faction and the villages of Charmin urge government to remove Alcalo. Ex Gamtel manager says arrested for refusing to disconnect citizen FM transmitter. Five students in court for unlawful gaming. And a fast Njagachoi community call on government to take ownership of a clinic. First, um, let's take a look at the three years Jatna story. The spokesperson of the banned three years Jatna group has a said despite their prescription and ongoing troubles with the law, uh, his group has not relented in ensuring President Barrow organized election in September and a step down. Haji Suare, who is, who is released on bail along with his group's arranged and detained executive, told the Standard yesterday, we will protest again to continue putting pressure on President Abaro to respect the three years agreement and call elections in September in which he will not contest. We are committed to continue holding our political leaders accountable to the promises they made to the Gambian people. Mayor Ben Suda vents frustration with government. The mayor of the Carnifing Municipal Council has called on the government to either empower the area councils or scrap them. A frustrated Talib Ben Suda told a Star FM in an interview aired yesterday that if they, central government, don't want to empower the area councils or feel like the councils are threats uh, to the political ambitions of leaders in government, they should create laws uh, to ban them. He um, said mayors in Senegal are very powerful because they are empowered. Uh, but in Gambia, the Ministry of Local Government is reluctant to give councils their dues. Mayor Ben Suda said he was not happy that the permanent secretary at the ministry mocked him at the National Assembly over the government's decision to, change, to charge um, import levies on waste collection trucks um, they purchased. IEC rebuilds NCP faction. The Communications and a Public Affairs Director at the Independent Electoral Commission has said the threat of disintegrating the National Convention Party has, been, has not been lifted. The Electoral Commission suspended the party following its, its split and the inability by the factions to hold a unified Congress as dictated by the law. Sute Jame, the deputy leader of one of the factions last month, accused the IEC of ineptitude for suspending the party. Party. He called on the president to dissolve the commission and said it was not fit for a purpose. Chairman of villages urge a government to remove Alcalo. Villages of Chairman Nyanija in the North Central River region have called on the government to remove their Alcalo. Some of the villagers who spoke to the standard claimed at least 110 out of the 120 compounds in the village are backing the removal of the Alcalo. The aggrieved villagers accused the village headsman of conniving with unscrupulous people engaged in illegal logging and of being aloof and treating them with contempt. Ex Gamtel manager says arrested for refusing to disconnect a citizen FM a transmitter. A former senior manager at Gamtel has attributed his arrest and detention by the National Intelligence Agency uh, to his refusal to cut the transmitter of Citizen FM radio station. Ibrahim Ayabo, 67, explained that in April 1995, the NIA summoned him to their offices. Upon arrival at the NIA, he said, I met FRI Jame, Sambaba, Numo Kujabi, and Francisco Caso. Numo Kujabi requested that I accompany them to Gamtel House to switch off citizens' FM radius transmitter. I told them that wouldn't be easy and that it was not under my remit to do as such. They informed President Yahya Jame that I refused to cut the transmitter and that I must be part of the groups who were not 
in support of the regime at, at that time, Yabo said. Five students in court for unlawful uh, gaming. Magistrate A.B. Fall of Abirkama sentenced uh, two students, Al Hadi Jalo and Abu Bakar Koli, to a fine of $1,000 uh, cash each in default to serve two months in prison after she found them guilty of operating a gaming house without a license. Uh, narrating the facts in court, a police prosecutor, Isa Tso, said on February 22nd, a police a patrol team headed by an inspector Mbuk went to the place of Mr. to the place of Mr. Kali in Birkama and found people engaged in gaming without a proper license. And the final story on the Standard newspaper: Fast and Jagatri community called on government to take ownership of a clinic. The community of Fast and Jagachoy has called on the government to take ownership of the clinic and upgrade it to a major health center for the people of Fast and Jagachoy and its surrounding villages. The call was made yesterday during the official opening of the maternity ward at the health center, which consists of one outpatient room, two delivery rooms, and two offices uh, sponsored by Helping Charity, an NGO based in the United Kingdom. The construction of the maternity ward was initiated by the community of Fas and Jagachoy and its surrounding villages to support access to health facilities, especially for women within the area, with financial support from helping a charity. The community members served as the sole laborers for the project. That's all we have um, from the Standard newspaper. go with our uh, stories. Um, uh, let's begin with uh, the FSKW. Nine sat officials of a Food Safety and Quality Authority were on Tuesday removed from the FSKW offices after they continued to defy their sacking by the authority. The police stormed FSKW and removed the officials and uh, took them to Kairaba Police Station where they were joined by other sacked officials. Fatu Kamarajini reports. Officials number 9 were yesterday removed from the FSQA offices after reporting to work. FSQA Director General Zainab Jalo has found life difficult as leader at the authority as some staffs have accused her of abuse of office and corruption. If you could recall recently just the chairman, the chairperson of the board of directors have resigned simply because he said the decisions that they want him to take, he is not in accordance with it. So he has to resign based on that. Uh, we have been writing to the office, our line ministry, which is the vice president, to inquire about these petitions because for us we feel as staffs we have been maltreated because we just filed a petition and we see because the reasons why we file a petition, we feel that Zainab is not uh, managing the office as it should be. The staff last year wrote to the vice president, Dr. Isa Tuture, informing her that Jalo was sacking staff illegally and that she was engaging in corrupt practices. However, Zainab Jalo denies the accusations. In January, seven officials got dismissed after they held a press conference at FSQA saying their petition against Zainab Jalo had been frustrated while calling for it to be implemented. Police yesterday stormed FSQA and removed staff who have been reported to work even after they were sacked by the authority. Uh, actually, we feel because at first the dismissals were wrong in the first place. The way it was, con the way it was conducted, it was wrong because Rightfully, it was supposed to be the board of director, the chairman, the board of director who should sign our dismissal letters, but he never did. So it means Zena was doing the dismissals because he she has something, an agenda against us. Zainab Jalo was not at the FSQA when the Fatu Network visited there as soon as news of police storming the complex emerged. Officials who were in the office declined to comment. 
At Kairwa Police Station, where the embattled staff were taken to, the mood is that of anger and frustration. Today in the morning, uh, Baidudu Jallo came into the office and said, oh, you guys should hand over. Because otherwise, uh, the IGP, the police, he said they are just waiting for our commands. So if you guys don't hand over, you'll be arrested. The aggrieved staff are also pointing a finger at the vice president, saying she is one behind the problem. We have been writing to the vice president. They, we have not been getting any response. And today in the morning when Baidudu came, that is the director of scientific affairs, he told us that they got instructions. The vice president instructed the IG that they should come to the office if we didn't leave the office they should arrest us that's what he said and we have that on record so we are not going to lie about it the vice president's office could not be immediately reached for comments reporting for the fatu network news review i am fatu kamara Genio. officials number in nine. tough africa global is proud to launch the moria gardens conveniently located in brufoot five minutes off the brufoot highway Moria Gardens is set to comprise of 20 fenced and gated service plots with sizes ranging from 264 to 420 meters square. Unique features include water and electricity infrastructure, solar street lights, all weather roads and scenic gardens. We offer a 10-year mortgage plan with a 25% equity down payment in partnership with GT Bank, Trust Bank and Echo Bank. For more information, please contact 376-2333 or 776-2333 or visit our offices at Madiba Mall at Taft Brewfoot Gardens, opposite Five Star Hotel. Welcome back. The Fatu Network has now learned that all 22 SAT officials have today returned to the Kairaba police station to surrender properties of the authority. The items included um, badges, laptops, um, computers, and motorbikes. Meanwhile, uh, Gambia, Gambian roads are often poorly constructed, resulting in frequent maintenances on them. The Kololi Manjai Road is one road that is currently under a fresh uh, construction and it is giving road users a problem. Fatu Kamara Jr. was in Manjai where she spoke to some of the people. The issue of government constructing poor quality roads is becoming a major concern in the Gambia. These roads quite often require occasional maintenance and this is now becoming a major concern for not just those whose lives depend on it but also others. <laughs> be banko mo klinte banko samba nolam mbele be banko sambala kata president wala kata ite men ye contrat di la isa long ko be do ko la na banko le silo ni be na banko le kan te fango sula taw silo le la na dingo ka tambije na muso ka tambije na fengo feng ka tambije so ni wo silo di la ko ya do ko kana silo ni do ku do ku nyaami ite fango ya lo ne ko ate tambila sanji kilin sanji fula silo ni nga botinya o man na fasoto so mumbela tinyaleti the kololi manjai road is getting fixed and this man is however glad that the government is doing something about roads that require work i see it as a very good thing because of that's what we are expecting for our go from our governor to do to us so I'm very, 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 very happy about this road maintenance. I have been seeing it all along. You know, sometimes when I drive along, I see they are making roads. And, and exactly, I really appreciate it. Babu Karsise is an auto mechanic, but he is arguing that the problem of roads getting fixed soon after they have been constructed will remain a tradition if the contracts are not given to the right experts. We have been working for 20 years. 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 Drivers Drivers are also having their say on the issue. 
lolé mbëgg gaay ñi defara ñuko yomb bu baax waaw lolé mbëgg daal ñi jël seen time ñi def ko liggéey bu correct mu jeex ben yoon parce que yoon bi daal dafa am jëfë jëfë daal yoon bi pour mu correct daal problème la daal xawma lan la nak waaw suñu bëgg li ñu bëgg daal moy gaay defara ñuko bu baax xamna do ñu am ben jëfë jëfë man nañ dem ay tenees luñ ko defara lolé mbëgg si yoon bi daal the kololi manjay road is one among many gambian roads that are currently getting a fix after only a few years of construction reporting for the fatu network news review i am fatu kamara junior that is the first time in the gambia your favorite gsm operator afrisol is the first and only gsm operator to launch a brand new technology called the e-sim the e-sim simply means you can use your phone without a sim card do you have an iphone 11 any of the iphone x series a google pixel 3 or any new phone that supports the e-technology, visit any Afrisol customer care center. Activate your e-SIM today. With your virtual Afrisol SIM, you can use more than one number without having a physical SIM card in your phone. Enjoy this brand new technology for the first time in the Gambia, brought to you by Afrisol. E-SIM, your phone without a SIM card. For more information, please call 111. Where Afrisol goes, no, no, nobody dares to follow. Dares to follow. Welcome back. And now we will be joined online by Coach Opa Samba Jao, human rights activist and social commentator. Coach, are you there? Are you there? Yes, Sajo. Uh, thank you very much for joining us here today on the Fatu Network News Review. Anytime. Uh, Coach, we have a couple of things that we will talk about. But first, let's start with the first one. Um, a peace award to former President Yahya Jame. A peace award, what do you think? Well, uh, Sajo, when uh, Omar broke the news to me because he was the first one to tell me. I thought he was joking. I thought it was a joke. I'm like, yeah, right. And he was, no, I'm serious. And then screenshot uh, the article and sent it to me. I think uh, uh, it is the saddest thing, and I think it shows the insensitivity of people uh, towards the victims of Yaya Jame. Uh, over the past 12 or 16 months, uh, we have seen graves, shallow graves been unearthed uh, in the Gambia. We've seen people coming to and confessing the, the horrendous, horrendous crimes that they committed uh, on the orders of Yaya Jame. So one would have expected that at least people would definitely uh, be sensitive to the, the plight of the victims rather than to come and start giving Jame a peace award. I don't know for what. Do you think this is an insult uh, to the victims of Jame, uh, considering everything that he has been accused of doing, especially when it comes to the human rights violations and everything? No, it is more than an insult. Yeah, Jame is like the rapist that uh, the raped continue seeing every day bragging about his rape of a victim. Because uh, Jame has done so much bad to our people, and this is not a secret anymore. Uh, so to, to have people come and say that, you know what, now here we are, we are giving Jame a peace award. And I even listened briefly uh, to the press conference that was convened uh, by the APRC, uh, which to me, I believe, is one of the most evil outfits in that country, uh, uh, proclaiming Jame as a peaceful man. And I just want to remain, re remind Fabakari Tombongjata that Jame's last two acts before leaving the Gambia that was after he nearly plunged our country into bloodbath, was to order for the killing of Abdullah Gay and Tumani Jallo. That those were the two last orders that Jami gave before he left the country. And uh, to, for, for Fabakri Tomongjata and his clique to sit here and tell us that Jami was peaceful, with everything that he did, everything that he did, the rape of women, the, the slaughter of innocent people, the, the torturing of innocent people. Every day we see people, grown-ups, coming before the TRRC, crying, recounting the crimes that they went through, imams and everything. So to me, it is, it is really a, a slap in the face. Uh, and uh, uh, that just shows that this is a very, very dangerous party that anybody, uh, uh, nobody definitely should be should be giving any 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 relevance to or any credence. They do not deserve respect. To me, it is an evil party. Jame to me, giving Jame a peace award is no different from giving Hitler a peace award. So, what do you have to say to his support to his supporters? Because this is not Jame um, awarding himself. This is the people behind him still supporting him despite everything that he has been accused of saying. Look, this man is a peaceful man, and we are awarding him. What do you say to his supporters? Well, this is what I say. Anybody who blindly supports evil 
is as evil as the evil man himself. Anybody who can sit now after hearing everything that Jamme has done and sitting here and telling us that you are, you, are, you are giving him an award, you are just as evil as Yaya Jamme. So to me, I don't think there is nothing that you can say to these people because you cannot help them. They are blinded by psychophancy and they are blinded by, 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 by wickedness. And maybe their eyes have been covered by the blood that Yaya Jamme had spilled in our country to the extent that they cannot any way, in any way, differentiate from good and evil. So to me, anybody who supports Yaya Jame, in fact, defends Yaya Jame's evil, to the extent of giving a peace award, is as evil as Yaya Jame. Uh, and on a, on a lighter note on the Jame Award thing, do you think we have to uh, blame Fatou Kamara for the TFN Heroes Award? I guess Jame said, man of the year, but for <laughs> me, what do you think? <laughs> well, you know, we know how much Jame loves award. People used to come and buy a uh, uh, $20 plaques here in the United States and send it to him and say we've given an award and he would have a big ceremony. So you're right. Maybe he didn't want to be on, on the off stage. Uh, the first thing was I'm on vacation. I'm going to come back to that country. And then it was the response was if you come here, you'll be arrested and prosecuted. So now it's like, okay, let me try something else to at least show this government that I'm still loved. But uh, yeah, you're right. Maybe Fatou needs to be blamed because he comes with Heroes Award. Jamie believes, oh, my name is not there. That we also manufacture one for me. <laughs> okay, now I, I guess that's the elephant that is not in the room. But how about the elephant that's in the room? A lot of people have been criticizing the President Barrow, saying that since the outbreak of the coronavirus, um, he's been up country and he hasn't come out to say a single word to the Gambian people. What do you say? Well, it is sad. Every responsible president around the world, even the dumbest president in the world, in Donald Trump, We've seen him now finally sitting with experts talking about uh, this coronavirus. Adam Abaro, unfortunately, is there holding his party, introducing his NPP. This is when leaders are supposed to lead. This is when they are supposed to start uh, step up to the plate. And especially, if, if I were President Barrow or any sensible person, the moment it was announced that Senegal had a victim, a case, of coronavirus. That would have been the time that Adam Abaru should have heeded the call that Mama Kande made to him to suspend his tour or whatever he's doing, come back to base and set up like a, 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 a command center, if you want to call it that, and ensure that his government will be doing everything possible to help our people. And it is sad uh, that with everything that we are lacking today, if coronavirus should hit the Gambia, let's just pray that it does not. It would be catastrophic because a country that cannot even diagnose headache properly will have a hard time diagnosing uh, coronavirus. And I want to appeal to the president and his government. Governance is not about the, 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 the fanfare. Governance is about standing up and doing uh, the right thing for your people. What the Gambian people deserve now is leadership, and we hope that Adam Abaro would show that leadership by coming back to the country, to, to not the country, to, 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 to state house, talking direct to the Gambian people, making sure that his uh, uh, minister and everybody else in the in that government, the technocrats who are working in the healthcare system, would at least be putting focus and seriousness in this. Because with the way that he is operating now, you would think that he doesn't care about the coronavirus, which is a serious threat now. Uh, <laughs> Everybody in the world. Well, one, one might argue and say, why does he have to come out to talk to the people? That's why he has his ministers there. But it, it is shocking to realize that even the health minister himself hasn't come out to say a single word. All we've been hearing is uh, words from health, other health officials telling us that things are in place. What do you think? Do you think the health minister needs to come out right now and speak to the Gambian people directly? Of course, but the health minister, the last time I checked, uh, was... They said following the president, they were doing whatever they are they, they told. You see, people must not see this as, oh, this is politics again. It's not. I saw pictures today of the president of Ghana, who was there visiting the, 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 the health care system to make sure that they were ready. Even we though Ghana has not registered a know, single case, by the way. A single, a single case. You know, you see it everywhere. Leaders are standing up and saying, you know, this is a serious matter. This is not a joke. This is a very, very serious problem. And it must be confronted, dealt with seriously. And I hope the president and Mr. Samati, the Minister of Health, would understand the gravity of this situation. 
and at least act accordingly. We want to see our health minister reassuring us. We don't want to have these junior officers. In fact, you listen to them for the most part. The more you listen to some of these officers, the more confused you become because they cannot show you anything tangible. This is where Gambia should be able to see, see what TV and see uh, uh, practical uh, 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 things that are put in place that say, you know, physically this is what we have, this is how the level of preparedness. I work in the healthcare system, uh, Sajo. I am responsible for uh, my supplies here. You know what I got from the State Department, from, from the Health Department of Health here? They sent me, uh, they, they emailed us and said, you know what, we want uh, an inventory of everything that you have, especially that has to deal with protective gear. We want to know how many gloves you have in the house. We want to know how many uh, isolation gowns we, we, you have in house. We want to know how many masks you have in house. Because that's what people do so that at least you get ready to prepare for it. And I'm telling uh, Mr. Barrow, this is not anything to do with whether you are a good man or a bad man. You are handling this thing wrong because this is an emergency. It's a danger and a gathering danger. And unless it is confronted with seriousness, we will live to regret it. Uh, thank you very much, there, Coach, Coach um, Pasamba Joe. Do you have any final words? No, thank you very much, Sajo, and we are glad to have. Thank you very much. Thank have you. Here, you're doing a tremendously good job. You know, you know, you're my star. But you know, keep on keeping on, and uh, let's hope that coronavirus would just get go away. You cannot wish these things away, but we hope they will go away so that our people will live in peace and and, and prosperity. Thank you. Thank you. So thank very you very much, much Coach. Thank you. Uh, that was Coach Pa Sambajau there, human rights activist and social commentator. Let's now go for a break and we'll be right back. The melodies keep coming in my brain and then you started like... Greetings to each and every one of you right now. My name is Barhama Cham, a singer, songwriter, and an activist from the Gambia. Everybody, everybody say. Take if you mean making it here. You can make it here without going outside. So we have to believe in it, get up, work hard to make the dream. That's what it is about, take a fee. Even before recording the song, I've always had the idea that I have to create something that the youths out there can listen to and get inspired from that. And then there was this afternoon that uh, the people that I did do the song with, Bright Stars, they decided to come to my home. My name is Asan Job alias Bugatabi from the Bright Stars Entertainment. It's a group that sends messages through entertainment, edutainment. <laughs> What you are going to look for somewhere else, we have it here. We are in the 21st century and music plays a key role in sharing information and it flows fast and it's easier to decode. The money that you're using to travel abroad or to travel through the back way, invest on it here. We have institutions that are willing to support. Once you are progressive, then they will come on board. So I can just take myself as a perfect example, you know. I always believe that I can make it in the game and right now, so many of my colleagues out there are making money from the industry, though it's not like that that compared to other countries, but it's really coming. You, you always feel proud when you realize that I'm in my country, I've been contributing to nation development, and now finally I've made it. Everything starts with the belief. If you don't believe that you can be a millionaire, no matter wherever you might be in the world, you can never be that millionaire. So you have to believe in it that you can make it first and then you can make it here. We've seen the examples, so why not you? Why not me? Hey, I'm 
Welcome back. And uh, finally, the annual Nyomi Fort Blaine Cultural Festival was recently held in Bara Fort Blaine. The objective of the event is to help uh, promote tourism in Lower Nyomi. Fatu Kamara Jr. was at the event and she now tells us more. The annual Nyomi Fort Blaine Colonial Heritage Festival came about as a result of the poor tourism condition of Bara. The festival, which was founded by an organization called Promoters of Artistic Creativity and Excellence in 2009, used to be celebrated in grand style. Unfortunately, this year's celebration was a nightmare. So the reason why I am a bit disappointed with this turnout is, one, I have acknowledged, um, I have understood that activities, especially ceremonies around this end, they normally start during the evenings. But the strings attached to it are, there is phobia looming now, because this migrant boat disaster was foretold by myself. Having observed the activities going on, the... the, 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 the the, the, the dubious things going on in my own community. Um, I wrote a letter to the local government minister telling him that I want you to come with the SAFO and the governor so that you be part of this inauguration. You be part of this discussion rather. Because Bara, as I have observed, the leadership is flouting the local government act and I think it is important that you address this issue. The mission for this year's festival celebration was to create an enabling environment to bring and engage the government and the people of Nyomi in a dialogue through which they can find a solution to the long stagnant community. However, the Honorable Councillor of Nyomi was present and he assures his continuous support to the people and youths in particular. If you check from Bara to Amdalai, there's nothing like a youth center. So we are working on that through the YEP project and the Take Fee to see how we can have one and look for people to train them in terms of entrepreneurial and other kind of skills. Because if you go to Senegal today, Senegal is an example for me. I only take Senegal as an example. You see small, 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 small kids doing a lot in terms of hard work. And look at Bara. We have the Fort Blend here. It's a cultural heritage. I think we can, the youth can be, can be empowered to, 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 to do a lot in their future endeavors tomorrow. And we believe that collectively, as I said earlier on, we can, we, can, we can do what we want in our political programs, inshallah, because the youths are my top priorities, and the women. An organization called the Nyunwa Bara were also present, and they mentioned their willingness to work with the Nyumi Bagway survivors. I did just ask um, Abba, how is that help? What, 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 uh, what is that help like? You know, are we going to gather, put money together and give it, and give it to them? to put in their pockets or what is it like? It's just no, I mean, it will be like um, maybe helping um, building some skill centers, right? For them to learn something or even, even um, what do you call it, building bakeries or whatever, just to take those guys, everybody have something to do. For the people of Bara, an ecotourism center would be great for their youths. However, the human resource manager of the Gambia Tourism Board, Saja Sambu, and the senior officer, public relations and communications, Usman G.H. Kebe of the Gambia Tourism Board, told the people that in less than an year, their department will build an ecotourism center with the help of the Ministry of Tourism and Culture. Well, uh, that's a good question. I cannot answer when it started, but I know very recently, I don't know how recent, but less than a year. Uh, and that uh, you see this piece here that you are seeing, that's exactly where the Echo Lodge is going to be. We have the designs, we have everything. Gambia Tourism Board together, uh, supported by the Ministry of Tourism and Culture. According to the Nyomi people, Fort Bullen is a place to be proud of by all Gambians. According to them, the fort stands as a symbol of freedom, for it was reported to be the only fort in Africa built by the British to abolish slavery. But what they don't understand is, why do the region still remain stagnant? The annual Nyomi... Paul, well, this now brings us to the end of this edition of the News Review. Do join us tomorrow if you can. Thanks for watching and bye for now.